I'm Ollie from Briars Atlas and A Strange Atlas. In this video, we're going to go over the Flex Themes animation engine and how we can push to the edges the functions within that to create our own unique interactivity. So the example we're going to look at today is duplicating one that I've already built on my website, ollysanson.com. So as we move the cursor over this page, it's almost like a pile of photographs reveal themselves based on, you know, the, the area that the cursor is. So it's kind of cool because it invites exploration from the user and you never quite know whether you've seen everything that's there. And I think it's a kind of cool way of introducing a gallery. So what we're going to do is apply that today to a few wedding photos. So we've got our first image on the stage. The first thing that we want to do is set our triggers and set our animation type. So we want it to be fade in, although you can be anything. It might just be quite weird if you're hovering over an image and it's like flying in from half a kilometer away off screen. So we're going to go with fade in. Nice and simple. And again, that should be the kind of mandate behind any animation usage inside Flex Themes. It's kind of using the minimum that you can get away with. Um, you know, you don't want it to be... You definitely don't want it to be too overbearing. You don't want it to be invisible. You want it to be just enough that it's increasing the value of the content that's there. So the delicate dance with any animation is just applying a little bit and not too much. So we're going to set the duration of this to 0 0.4. And the key is to preview everything along the way to make sure we're not pushing things too far or restraining them too much. So if we imagine that the cursor is hovering over this, and it's fading in like that, that feels like a good amount of time. So we're going to leave that at 0 0.4 and we're going to leave the delay at 0 because we don't want that waiting while our cursor's there and then it fades in. That's just going to feel super weird. So we'll set the delay to 0 and we want the opacity to start at 0. We don't want the user to be able to see a little bit of the image. We want it to be not there at all. And of course, we want to make sure our trigger is set to hover. So now, if we just test this out, we should be able to see an example of just one image working in that way. Perfect. Hover on and it fades in, hover off and it goes away. So now what we want to do is we want to duplicate this. Now that we've set our parameters correctly, we want to duplicate that image. and begin placing our photographs around the stage. Now the key to this is to not cover up images too much. For example, if we cover up this image down here, then that there, that sliver along the bottom and along the right hand side is the only region where that image will appear if the user is hovering. And that can be kind of cool if you want to hide things on there and, you know, have little hidden Easter eggs. But most of the time it might feel really weird if we're hovering over this thin line here, something appears and we try to catch it again and we're waving our cursor around like a lunatic and it's not appearing. So the key for this sort of device is to just give all of your images enough of a chance to be caught by the cursor. So we're going to do, let's see... Just to give an example, that'll be enough. Now, first thing we want to do before we spend too much time making sure these images are different is we want to do a preview just to make sure it's working as a concept. And survey says that is not working. So let's go back and find out what I've done. So we'll save our block first and then we'll preview it. So, there we go. Now we can see that as we wave the cursor around, it kind of invites exploration. So, at this point, what we can do is we can start populating all of our images. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and just change up all of the images that I've put in here. Now, a cool way to think about this is kind of from almost from a design point of view. So think about 
light and dark images, images that are busy, images that aren't busy, and you don't want to have too many of one type in the same area. So that's why I just swapped these two over because we've got an image here that feels light and then we've got one that feels dark and then light and so forth. So space it out and almost make it musical how you're placing the images. But for the moment, I'm just going to bring in all of the different images that I've got and then I'll rearrange them afterwards. Hell yeah. Okay, so now we've got all of our images placed and the one thing we want to think about now is whether we should swap out the feeling of any of these. So this one feels a bit lighter so I'm going to put it up here and just space these out a little bit. Let's get another light one in there and then back to dark, light and dark. Okay, now once these are set, we're going to save our flex block. And we're going to preview it. And there we go, a cute little mouse over technique using the flex themes flex block animation engine.